Hey up lads and lasses, Danfi here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange, and today, the last of the cruisers, I believe, we are looking at the Callisto. Um, it's a bit of a fan favourite, this one, the anti-ship type anyway, and it's due to its absurd uh, damage output. Um, I believe they even nerfed it a little bit a long time ago, like, a year ago uh to reduce the damage output because it was it was disgusting the damage output of the anti-ship type however it's still absolutely disgusting anyway so it hasn't really changed so let's jump into the base version and have a chat about it so in my last video you may have noticed i mentioned something about uh jaeger predators with the anti-carrier meta that's kind of coming about a little bit uh, to try and kill off swarm fleets um, cold dead because uh, the swarm fleets 120 aircraft and stuff like that fantastic um, but if you don't have carriers because they're all dead uh, because of predators and stuff like that uh, prioritizing the target of those carriers uh, you, you actually kill the swarms pretty quickly and although tp intensive it has proven to be a pretty effective strategy now, the counter to that counter is the Callisto. So the Callisto has an absolutely huge torpedo, uh, cluster torpedoes. It's prioritized as large ships with battleship carrier, battlecruiser, cruiser, although I found that it does tend to go for cruisers over, uh, over battlecruisers, the base version anyway. I'm not so certain on the anti-ship type. I think that will actually target uh, cruisers a bit quicker. Either way... Definitely worth trying this ship out. I've been moving tech points around to try and counter the small destroyer meta. However, with the cruiser uh, sort of coming back a little bit in the forms of the Predator and Jaeger, the Callisto is probably in a better situation now than it was previously. It is a back row ship, so you can, for the most part, ignore the armor system, although I'd still probably recommend picking up the ship HP at least. Um, this is the slowest ship in the game as well, so bear that in mind uh, if you are putting this into... Uh, sorry, it's the slowest cruiser in the game, so bear that in mind if you are putting it into fleets. At cruising speed at 400, you may consider going early into the cruising speed upgrades just to bring it up a bit so you don't die aboard and waiting for this to get around. After that, 100% go into the Eternal Polaris launching system. You get the Supernovas uh, Torps, which are, yeah, you, you get each one is firing four times eight cluster munitions with 350 damage per hit. It's absurd the damage this thing can chuck out. And this is the base version. The other version, I think it doesn't have cluster Torps, and it's like one times eight attacks per round, but they're like... 2,600 damage per hit torpedoes. They're crazy. Anyway, first off is first, depending on what you're currently fighting and what the current meta is on your server, you may want to consider picking up the heavy ammo quickly. This is a passive effect, so it's a strategy that's always in use. When the target is a cruiser, increase its damage by 60% and attack duration by 30%. This is just an overall huge damage increase and 100% worth picking up earlier than pretty much everything else here uh, just to give you huge amounts of damage buffs quickly for a relatively cheaper TP investment than saying going all the cooldown, all the damage upgrades and that kind of thing. I do recommend also picking up the hit rate against cruisers in this situ uh, situation as mostly due to the fact that it hasn't got the best hit rate but it's not bad, but you can buff it some more, and you have a lot of slots to play around here. I mean, what's that? Four, seven slots to play around with? So you can pick up the heavy ammo, the cooldown, double hit rate, and that's four, and you've still got three slots left to play with, and some of these aren't particularly useful. So picking up the double damage again, giving you an extra 20% damage on top of its 60% damage you're going to be potentially getting from heavy ammo and the 30% damage increase for upgrading, you can see why this thing gets pretty strong uh, damage output. It does have crit naturally, which means picking up the crit damages actually do work quite well on this thing. Um, 
It's a shame that it doesn't have the, the one that increases crit damage and crit chance, but having double crit damage does work quite well, and you have got kind of the spare slots to play around, so you could drop one of the damages and pick up uh, both the crit damages for the off chance that when it does crit, it's going to hit like a truck. Now, the support type, uh, I should go over the, the rest, really. The generic rapid-fire cannons, they don't do anything. You can generally ignore them. If you are going to use it, pick up the fight hit rate, the cooldown, and then the damage. Uh, we talked about the propulsion system already, and I talked a bit about the armor system, but you can pick up the physical resistance here. It has no energy resistances, but it has got a native 10% anyway. And it's back row, so you're not too worried about that anyway. The support. One of the oddest things happened, um, and it was... Someone was testing this, and then they sent me a load of, like, battle reports and it turns out that for a very small damage decrease and i'm talking like a 10 percent damage decrease and that sounds like a lot but it's not realistically you actually get this anti-aircraft uav system and it's actually not bad it has the potential to actually dish out a fair amount of uh anti-air damage the problem being it is counter-attack however I do recommend running the support version just because of these, the counter-attack potential against aircraft is enough to actually knock out quite a few aircraft when it's getting prioritized. And because it is a cruiser, it gets priority quite a bit, but quite a few things. So I'd actually recommend running the UAV version. You are losing a little bit of damage, but for the most part, it's cluster torpedoes are just firing uh, a few less attacks per round uh, and all the up same upgrades are here so you, you are generally just running a slightly uprated version of the base torpedo type so it upgrades the same way it's back row still so I'd recommend going into the uh, launcher system, the cluster torpedo system first, then into the anti-aircraft UAV, where you're going to be picking up the hit rate, the RTB, one of the damage mods, and the lock-on speed. And yeah, try it out. It's you know very minimal damage loss for a potential anti-aircraft weapon. Unfortunately, only counter-attack, but does work. Um, so yeah, not too bad. Again, after you've done the uh, the projectile launching system, the, the torpedo system, jump into the armor system, uh, picking up the hit ship HP if you haven't done it earlier, picking up the physical resistances. Again, from there, that's pretty much the ship done. You have got the generic um, cannon anti-aircraft, but it doesn't really do anything in comparison to the anti-aircraft UAVs, so you can actually generally ignore that. Uh, for a strategy on this thing, you do get the guard uh, resource nodes. I I kind of tested it out, and I just kind of sat there and went, I don't see a use for it. So the idea of you being able to guard resource nodes is nice. It stops you know people coming in and killing your miners and stuff like that. But at the same time, you genuinely have uh, you know an amp down or a imp or you know something of that nature and that's going to have you know three four five uh resources and okay this can guard up to three resource nodes but if you blockade your amp then you're guarding all of the resource nodes that you're probably just using uh so it just makes way 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 more sense to do that over using this which is a bit unfortunate because it does make it completely and utterly redundant in my opinion and I don't recommend running it. Uh, but there you go, you save some tech points I guess. Uh, yeah, I just ignore the command system completely in my opinion here. Uh, just not worth it. Propulsion system, yeah, it's the same. It's a slow ass ship so probably increasing the cruising speed earlier than maybe even the armor and the generic battery system might help you out you may even go into it before the torpedoes and the anti-aircraft uav system just to be able to get it into a fleet that's not horrendously slow so the anti-ship type um is there there we go 
The anti-ship type, as you can see, it's coming with this nice 1850 huge amount of damage, and it's due to these huge torpedoes doing 1600 per hit. Like I said, they don't have clusters, they are just firing eight torpedoes at you. Um, it's got a 16 second duration, 28 second cooldown, five second lock on speed, so it's a you know, pretty decent lock on speed, and you're gonna be doing 16 damage per hit. Upgraded with 30% boosts and you know all the damage mods. This is actually one of the few ships where I'd recommend taking the damage over the cooldown. Unfortunately, you can't click on any of these enhanced systems. Um, the damage over the cooldown on this ship, because you can get it to a point where it's about 2,600 damage per torpedo. 2,600 times eight is like an entire destroyer's HP. It's like it is absurd the amount of damage this thing can inflict, and because the damage is so high, um, it, it you don't even care about whatever armor. Heavy armor ST fifty nine gets uh, seven hundred thirty, seven hundred twenty five, seven hundred thirty five armor. It's probably the most armor in the game, and this thing is still going to be dealing nineteen hundred damage per hit against it why <laughs> it's like yeah it, it's it's crazy priorities battleships carries battle cruisers cruisers i was pretty certain this did attack battle cruisers before cruisers so there you go um probably why we don't see many crew uh, battle cruisers around anymore is probably because of these uh but they will do pretty well against pretty much any capital ship uh i think it does struggle a little bit against destroyers being able to hit them so any hit rate buffs you can give this here you could even consider giving it hit rate buffs over uh cooldown uh buffs just because yeah the lower dpm sucks a little bit but at the same time making sure you get your hits in is going to be better and like i said the damage buffs on this are just too big to give up each 10% damage buffs like an extra 160 damage and you can get I think two of them and then the 30% damage and then I believe it this does actually also have um should be able to see you key targets when the enemy fleet includes battle cruisers it prioritizes attacks on these targets it increases damage by 25% so you know when are you not going to pick that up uh that's a passive effect it just means it's better Anything, any of the passive strategies are generally really good. It's the the ones that are, you know, you got ten seconds of shooting really fast. Fantastic! It's really not worth it. Um, so yeah. Other than that, it's pretty much the same as the base. After the internal polar, uh, after upgrading the torpedo system, you are back row, so you don't care too much about the armor. Do recommend picking up the double HP and the double physical resistances before going into the generic battery system picking up whatever you want in there because it doesn't really matter, and then into the propulsion system to finish off. And that is it for the cruisers. Your anti-cruiser cruiser is your last one to have a look at. Obviously, there are you know heavy cannon chimeras and stuff like that that do the role as well, but the Callisto heavy torpedo variant is the king of pretty much the cruisers for killing capitals and super capitals. Um... So yeah, there you go. Callisto, definitely worth checking out. I do quite enjoy using uh, the UAV uh, version. I might even try run it a little bit more next server. At the same time, if you do get the HT version, definitely give that one a go. It's uh, it, it's just got absurd damage potential. And yeah, you, you only need like three, four of them in your fleet. It's fine at 20, uh, tech point, uh, 20, 20 CP. It is one of the more expensive um cruisers because at the end of the day you know can it come out uh, Connemara chaos if i can speak english today uh and chimeras and light cones light cones shouldn't be 20 tech points in my uh 20 tech points 20 cp they should be 18 um but yeah actually i generally think that a few of these uh cruisers should be dropped down uh the ios the cash should be about 16 uh, the KCCPV, maybe even drop that down to 14. And you might see a bit more cruiser usage within the game. It'd be a nice change, I think. Um, Callistos and Jaegers and Predators are probably 
sat about right because they do have potential in the current meta and uh, I don't think they're overcosted for what they can do. Actually, if anything, the Predator and uh, Jaegers are slightly undercosted. They're equally, uh, they carry the same amount for the same cost as most of the destroyers that can carry uh, Corvettes and fighters. So you're carrying the same amount but then you're also getting the benefits of, you know, in the Predator Tactical version, you, you get new AVs or the Octify missiles on the base version, the anti-air version. The Jaeger, you're getting all the strategies that's like anti-carrier and stuff like that. So I, I think they are technically undercosted. Um, but yeah, Callisto, definitely worth giving it a go. If you do get it, check it out. It's absurd. It's still, you know, the S tier in terms of damage potential out of all of the cruisers. So there you go. Have a good one, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.